I really like this question because it shows, once again, the power of my favorite strategy of plug points into equations. And there are two ways to do that here uh, that are both unique, but can still kind of get you the same way if you're just thinking, all right, points and equations. So uh, let me show you the way that I think the SAT probably wants us to do, which is a little bit more algebraic. Um, what I think of when I see this is obviously I have points, right? It says X and Y in the chart, so I have, I have points. And they're telling me it's a linear relationship so we can create the equation of a line pretty easily. Y equals MX plus B. Now we're being asked for the slope. So M is gonna be our mystery, meaning that we should be able to plug in the Y, the X, and the B. Or at the very least, if we can do that, we can then solve for M. And we've got Ys and Xs. We got three sets of them, right? So that, that part's checked off. The B is the y-intercept. And remember, the y-intercept is where x is equal to zero. So they, they were very nice here. They gave us that point. So I'm just gonna put n for B because that's the y-coordinate at the y-intercept where x is equal to zero. So this is the B, right? So this, this point here. Then I'm gonna choose a different point to plug in for x and y so that I get rid of all the variables and I just have the M. And I, I'm not quite right there, but you, you'll see. So N plus 92, that's my Y. N plus 92 is equal to M. And then negative 3 is my uh, X. And then plus N is the plus B. So I know I said we're only going to have one variable. And we have the N. But watch what happens. Let's rearrange this a little bit. N plus 92 is equal to negative 3M plus N. If we continue with the moves of algebra, we would say, all right, I want to solve for M. And that M might have N in its solution, right? Look at the choices in C and D. They have N's in them. N being in there is not the worst thing in the world. But watch, if we subtract N from both sides, the N's cancel out on the, the right side, which is what we wanted, but they also cancel out on the left. So this works out really nicely. Now we have 92 is equal to negative 3M, and we would divide both sides by negative 3, to get M alone, and there it is. 92 over negative three is the same as choice A, and that's the answer. So this is a, a great example of why variables and algebra make things look really scary, but especially on the PSAT and SAT, things just kind of work out sometimes. Uh, you have to just dive into a question and get it started because a lot of times things that look like they're gonna create a mess kind of just go away, work themselves out. And in this case, yeah, the N, even if it didn't go away, we still should have gotten like C and D, but it really just worked itself out. And plug points into equations is a very nice way of just like trusting the process a little bit and not letting the fact that the points are messy get in our heads, right? We, points are points. Sometimes points involve other letters. That's okay. X's and Y's though, we can plug in no matter what kind of equation we have and see what's going on. And then from there, I mean, we can make adjustments. But if you're really bothered by the fact that there's an N in these points, we could also have just made it disappear. Remember that one way that we can plug points into equations is we can arithmetize. We can make up values for variables that don't end up mattering. We can see what happens. So in this case, if you don't like that N, make it go away. In this case, I would probably make it something like one because I, I noticed that if N is gonna be zero, choice A and choice C would kind of look the same uh, because zero plus 92 is just 92. And so that would, C and A would both be 92 over negative three. So I don't want to have two answers that look the same. So kind of preempting that, I'm going to choose one instead of my typical zero for N. If that's confusing, don't worry about it. As you get more comfortable with arithmetize, you will start to think ahead a little bit about which numbers are good. But if you're confused, then just zeros and ones are the best way to go. So in this case, if I made N one, then that this point here would be 93, right? N plus 92 is one plus 92, which is 93. And so this would be 185. Now I have points that are much more normal. So we can just use the regular slope formula, y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. So y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. Let's, let's just do some normal points. Let's make this point um, one here and this point two. So 93 is my first y minus one over uh, negative three minus zero. So that is just 92 over negative three, which, which is choice A. Now we would still need to check the other choices and make sure, because if we, we, we made N one, 
then we need to make all the ends one, including the ends and the answer choices. Now, B does not have an end, so that we already can see is wrong, because that's not the same, right? 3 over 92, or, or negative 3 over 92 is different, so that's wrong. If we plugged 1 in for choice C, we'd be close... But it's not quite the same, right? That's 93 divided by negative 3. That's not the same as 92 divided by negative 3. It's close, but it's not quite the same. Here we'd have 2 minus 92 over 3, right? So 2 times 1, n is 1. So that's negative uh, 90 over 3. And again, it, it's close, but not quite the same. So that's wrong too. So if that makes you more confident to have an actual number, then you can work with either the y equals mx plus b, we could have done that as well, or you can work with the, the traditional slope formula to find the slope. It doesn't matter. The point is we're still plugging things into equations. We're providing the equations because y equals mx plus b is uh, a standard line equation. The slope formula is something we do need to memorize, and it seems like this test is, is using it a lot. Um, but we're also sometimes, if we want to, providing the points. If we don't have numbers as points, we can sometimes arithmetize and make them up. I'm not, I don't know what way is best. It kind of just depends on your level of comfort with these strategies. But I would say that just be open-minded. Try new things. And the more you practice arithmetizing and plugging points into equations, the more comfortably, comfortable you'll be using those strategies during the real test.